tremendous amount of response from our last swing makeover that talked about using the rotational trainer to help get the hips and the shoulders working on the same plane at the same speed and how well it eliminates lunging by giving you the feeling of those two working in sync at a back angle that's going to allow you to drive the ball into the outfield as a line driver home run. So with the consistency of the stride and the weight transfer and the good rotation of the hips and the shoulders in sync, the last element that we really need to do is the snap. Understanding now that we have all that power from the hip rotation and the weight transfer and we need to direct the bat head from lag back to impact. And our wrists and forearms don't supply the power but they must be strong because what they do is they guide that bat on the perfect path. We want to go from point A, lag back, to impact and finally to follow through. And we want to do that all on a straight line, point A to point B at the finish with contact at the halfway point. And the interesting thing is that I've talked to every top pro over the last 25 years and almost to a man they say that they feel the wrist snap but they really aren't aware or they aren't conscious of how it works because they just do it naturally. And when I ask three different pros today, guys like Scott Kirby, he feels like his hips just throw the bat head into the ball. When you talk to Johnny McCraw, he feels like he turns pops a balloon, uses the hips to drive the knob of the bat like he's popping a balloon and then the extension and the snap happen after that. Or you talk to guys like Bob Waldike or Chris Larson and they feel like the top hand extends with the arm and hammers and does a lot of the work. So certainly it adds even more confusion. That's why we're really pumped and excited today because my son Brett came up with a simple drill that allows you to feel the snap without overthinking it and after a while you develop the muscle memory within your wrist so that when you come around and it's time to swing your wrist can actually do a great job of directing the bat head into the ball A to B and creating a perfect snap. Brett you first came up with this perfect snap at a clinic we did in Cape Coral where guys were having a hard time manipulating their wrist to get any kind of snap at all. They are using their hip skip but they really dropped the bat head and talk about what you developed down there. The biggest flaw that people were having were they were dragging the bat head around and we just couldn't get them to understand that they had to get the snap from A to B into the point of contact and that and your bat had to stay you know on that good plane to make consistent contact and they were dropping down blow like this and you know we tried getting them to, to extend their top hand or do a couple other things that, to, to get them to snap more and nothing was working so we really just set, took them aside and said you really need to get the feeling of that A to B along the guide rope snap to the point of impact and it really we just took them so that gravity kind of helps out with it and we just had them snap into the point of contact like this same exact swing lead arm is straight this is the connected position and just having them snap down like that so they could really feel the wrist torque and the path of the bat how it's supposed to be in your normal swing you're letting gravity take the knob and the bat head down. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to fight centrifugal force and swing it up. Thus, it's a lot easier not to have the bat head drop. And it was real interesting because the guys just did it naturally real well. So once I go like this, I set my body angle and it's exactly the same feeling and swing that I'm doing, just set at a different angle. So it's like this and then, or like this. I mean, just to give you an idea of the bat path, you know, coming down like this, well, if you just adjust your body angle and come up through it, it's exactly the same swing plane. And immediately after guys were doing that, they got up there without even thinking about it. They'd do one, two to get ready, and then they'd get up there, and all of a sudden they were just snapping right along the, the proper plane, and just like they were swinging across the guide rope, which we tried, you know, multiple things to get them to do, and this was what we called the perfect snap, and it was a kind of a quick fix. The interesting thing about it is that usually you manipulate body parts to make something happen. And here the wrists are so hard to teach because they move very subtly from a palm down, palm up position. Here we simply take the bat head in the path that it goes from A to B and we're letting our wrists feel what that is like. And so I mean that's totally different than most teaching that we've done and, every, and most teaching that's done. You manipulate a body part to make the weapon go in that direction. But here we actually take the bat head from A to B and we do the reverse. We feel what the wrists do and after a while you can get the natural feeling. Yeah, this is what the wrists are doing. And then you can start to manipulate your wrists once you get a little muscle memory built up and then do a good job directing 
all the power of your hips to the bat head. Yeah, some of the individuals we're working with have never felt, you know, like you said, what your wrists are supposed to be doing. They just, they don't know what it feels like, so they can't develop the muscle memory. Gravity helps take the knob and the bat head down. That's probably why that was so successful. Well, it's just more, it's a more natural motion. I mean, um, there's things you do in life. I mean, you, if you're, if you're swinging a hoe or you're, or you're swinging an axe or something. I mean, a lot of things that we do naturally are on a lower level. There's not a lot of things that, you know, human beings do naturally as far as trying to hit something up in the air. That's why softball is kind of un an unnatural thing. I interviewed the pro players at Softball Magazine Spring Training this year, how they use the hips and wrist in sync to drive the ball with such consistency and such an incredible amount of power. You know, you talked a little bit about you hammer, do some hammering work. This wrist flexes just a little bit to push that bat head ahead and you feel sometimes like that gives you just that last little bit of power? Yeah, yes I do. It's, it, it, it means that, I mean, to me that, you know, to me, any little more part of your body that gives you that little extra, I mean, you take advantage of that. And I feel like that part of your, the last little snap is that little much of extra pop you can get. I, I mean, I drive off and then it's, you know, everything comes, my wrist, everything. I just explode with everything. Do you feel more focused on one side or the other? Do you feel more like you're you're pulling it and then your left wrist is triggering the snap? Right. Yeah. It's all, it snaps right there. On the, when you come through, it snaps. That's what, my when my hip explodes, my wrist snaps on the bottom. Well, my hips and then my hands follow. They're not too far away from my hips, but my hips are going. My hands are following. And then you get that, that snap and right to that. Ball hits and then I throw it through. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm the same thing, backside with the push snap. I mean, it's, it's everything is, is driven hard through that, that top hand. So do you leave your left wrist limp and just hammer with the top hand, or do you try to torque them together right I at the end? I try to torque them together right at the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's everything. I mean, it's, that's with the pull through, and not everything, like there's that snap that comes together at the same time with both of them right there towards the, about that, that point of contact. I guess, yeah, you know, I've been playing so long, you're gifted with a little talent with your hands. Ain't nothing changed uh, Bogue as far as our last interviews, our previous six interviews. I mean, if I go through my swing, it should be the same. Uh, you know, I try to, as I get a little older now, I'm trying to torque a little more. And the reason I say I torque it a little more, because used to, I was, you know, you're gifted with a little bit of strength, but, you know, as you're getting older, that strength starts to, starts to decline, so you got to rely on torquing a little harder nowadays. The skew is this. We all know from you talking in the past, you feel a lot of pull from this front side. Correct. You know, this is pushing too, but, you know, that's your main focus. That's the guide, and you're taking the knob yep. and an up angle here. When you get to this point here, what I've never really asked you before, and I'm understanding better myself to help out the rec guys, is Canel... McCraw, everybody feels this wrist right here has to break just a tiny bit to let that go by. It does. What, it what, does. Is, what exactly does yours feel like? Well, it, exactly what you just said. My wrist, I have to break. my. Once I get here with the knob coming here, my hands and my wrist are, are strong to where this right here it turns, is, is got like to it, break. Yep, you got to watch. You turn that. You turn that worth just down. Yes. and it's just enough to let everything blast through. And if you got your hands like this. You know, some people grip that bad old baseball style. If I'm coming here, my hands can't break down. If I do them like I hold the bat, when I come here, this, this top hand's a guide hand, so when I push and hit make contact, boom, my wrists are rolling over, and then it just comes back free. For me, if I stay here, I struggle trying to get my wrist around. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's an easy break. You uh, feel that? Oh, oh yeah. Left, right? Once I get into here, it's just it automatically comes on through. When you get to the snap here, do you have any conscious effort of your wrist snapping or is it just so fast that this hand blows by the bottom? There's no conscious effort. I don't even think about it. it the extent, it the continued the drive and extension yeah. of the hands and the hips creates the snap because your top hand's gonna throw up by the bottom. Right, and now the only thing that I do, I, I do is I, I, I've always, line those fingers up even with an overlap grip I've always lined those knuckles up like they told you when you were a kid right and I've always put it out in the fingertips like they say you know like you're grabbing a golf club I've always put it out in the fingertips and it's always you know bone to bone there so that's uh, one thing that I think helps me with that snap is keeping those knuckles lined up and keeping it out in the fingertips versus back in the palms and having it like this and you still want to be able to use that tricep and then, and then that wrist explosion at the end to where if you can stay compact here, 
you're getting that tricep, boom, and then you're and then you're getting that barrel width. Mine's more natural. I don't really focus on exactly, you know, paying that much attention to what my hand's doing. It just feels like it hits that, I get into that slot naturally. Yeah. That's probably hip driven, I would think. The faster you can create a threshold of a lag, the more you get a snap. And exactly.